my lords. As you'll be aware, early into our empire's expansion, we discovered a race of spacefaring entities that we designated the Tianqi, or more commonly known by the populace, space whales. These were deemed to be docile creatures capable of accessing some lower dimensions of subspace. They can roam in between systems with apparent ease. We believe they graze on gases common to the upper layers of many gas giants, although our astrozoologists are not in full agreement. Some believe they must intake other nutrients, but that has yet to be observed. Importantly, to date, they have not attacked our vessels, and as such, can be safely ignored. Bearing all this in mind, science vessel Hammond, commanded by Dr. Grant, have discovered a system steeped in mystery. Dr. Grant, returning from researching destroyed scourge vessels, has found a previously unidentified hyperlane and took the initiative. Upon arrival in this new system, the Doctor discovered it contained a singular Class C star, one potential planetary body, and a large asteroid field. Nothing particularly noteworthy. However, it quickly became apparent that the planetary body was being patrolled by four pods of Tianqi. This was most unusual given our current understanding of their previously documented behaviour. The Doctor thought perhaps they were protecting some sort of nest, However, as Dr. Grant moved his science ship in system, one of the patrols became aggressive and began to attack the vessel. Dr. Grant and his ship were able to emergency jump to safety, fortunately with zero damage or casualties. But the question remains, what is the source of this strange behaviour and what indeed are these Tianqi protecting? Dr. Grant proceeded to take the Hammond back into the system, now officially designated Tian Ort. This time, Dr. Grant made sure to stay as close to the hyperlane exit as possible and slowly manoeuvre his ship around the system to the asteroid belt in order to hide and begin detailed scans. The doctor was able to land on one of the larger asteroids and commence drilling. Interestingly, he discovered that the asteroid on which he hid his ship contained large amounts of biological tissue. With scans of the system ongoing, the doctor and his team devoted more resource to discovering the nature of these mysterious biologics. Shockingly, they discovered that the asteroids are not asteroids in the conventional sense at all. Instead of being made of rock and ice, it appears that they are in fact ancient, frozen, beaten, battered and ultimately compressed Tianqi corpses, reduced to shapeless lumps after decade in situ within this system. Some of the samples predate human existence by thousands of years, whereas other samples are relatively fresh, only a number of decades old. Dr. Grant, after continuous scanning of patrol patterns, established that the Tianqi are most definitely protecting something, the planetary body. It is unclear if anything is situated on this mass, but there is the possibility that like the asteroids, it is in fact a mass of dead and decaying Tianqi. Dr. Grant came to the conclusion that we had two options, slay the protectors of the system or find a way to placate them, luring them away for example. Dr. Grant was able to safely exit the Tianort system and establish contact with the nearby strike force Jurassic, commanded by Admiral Roland Tembo. The strike force was, like the majority of our navy currently, returning to resupply following ongoing engagement with the Scourge. Given that the war with the Scourge is not going as well as we would hope, Admiral Tembo was understandably eager to get back into the action. It was decided between Grant and Tembo that the Tianqi protecting the system would be slaughtered, to allow Dr. Grant and his team to investigate the system further. Admiral Tembo and Strike Force Jurassic entered the Tianort system roughly one week later. They were immediately greeted and attacked by one of the four small pods of Tianqi patrolling the system. I include Tiembo's personal log to account for the ensuing battle. My battle group entered the system at approximately 1600 hours Universal Standard Time. Our ships maintained half speed as we moved inward. After all, Dr. Grant's experiences aside, I had encountered many Tianqi and never once been attacked. I did hope that we could solve this situation without bloodshed. That hope however quickly disappeared as the first group of Tianqi detected and engaged us. Short of ramming the corvette escorts, they could not harm us. Our shields and armour far too powerful for their amoeba swarms. I ordered the battleships Owen and Malcolm to come about. Each Tianqi was felled with a single shot from the kinetic batteries equipped on these vessels. 
As if sensing the death of their kin, the remaining Tianqi patrols swarmed our location. Before they managed to close range, Tachyon lances spat vicious blue energy, burning holes clean through the fleshy bodies of the Tianqi, almost cleaving them in half. A quick death at least. Dr. Grant suggested we stay to harvest the corpses. Valuable as they are, I've requested a cleanup crew come by separately, once Grant is finished with the system. Our borders remain under siege, and I'm eager to get back to the front, lest the scourge overwhelm us. Dr. Grant was now able to enter and explore the Tianort system, without fear of attack. What he found was truly disturbing. The object that was previously identified as a planetary body was indeed a grave, a thick mass of dead Tianqi. No life signs were detected, and yet the corpses squirm, as if animated by some inscrutable force. It is hard to determine what this mass is. Drilling has only revealed layer upon layer of biological tissue. Dr. Grant reports according to his estimates, it would take approximately 2,435,463 Tianqi bodies of average size to produce a planetary mass of this size given its overall diameter and density. Even if we assume that at the centre there is a sizeable rocky core, the number of bodies involved is still significant. Dr. Grant proposes the disturbing question of how the mass came to be. Is someone or something bringing Tianqi here to die? Or are they somehow compelled to this system as their final hour draws near? And why did the Tianqi feel compelled to protect it? The doctor reports that the unusual liveliness of the dead Tianqi seems to be a byproduct of their natural regenerative capabilities. Even though technically dead, the bodies are still reassembling themselves. The Tian Ort system does have a far higher concentration of the gaseous substance that the Tianqi feed on, which may explain this bizarre behaviour. It was always assumed that the Tianqi feed and digest the gases, their immense and complex digestive systems fueling their bodies. However, it seems that their epidermis and some intramuscular tissue clearly have some osmotic abilities, thus allowing growth and movement even though the animal's cognitive functions are well since lost. Indeed, this ability seems to be fueling the growth of the mass. The Tianqi appendages latch onto floating corpses and drag them in, further increasing its size. It appears that over thousands of years, this is how the mass has become so large. This raises further questions. Obviously the mass isn't alive, but it appears to be able to exhibit some form of growth. Dr. Grant reports that his team could not decide on the appropriate nonclementure to define the mass. Is this a place? Or is this a being? Large-scale scanning of the mass have discovered that there is a complex network of tunnels beneath the surface. Mining equipment has been brought in and excavation begun. The mass has been designated Auric Vool. The doctor and his team entered the tunnels with great anticipation. Chemical analysis confirms that the walls of the tunnels are composed of deceased Tianqi in a similar manner to the surface. In this case, however, they are highly compressed into an incredibly dense material. Disturbingly, this material also shows regenerative properties. It is warm to the touch and shows no sign of decomposition, despite rivaling the age of our empire. After mapping the extensive underground network of Auric Vool, Dr. Grant has established that it closely matches the structure of a Tianqi vascular system, just on a planet-wide scale. As the team push deeper towards the core of the mass, the temperature and humidity begins to increase. Bizarrely, scanners are now showing a faint life signal. As Dr. Grant and the team push through into the final chamber, they came across something difficult to describe with words alone. In the vast chamber, an oversized Yankee stood upright, balancing on its various appendages. Tentacles spread throughout the chamber, forming links, connecting into the walls, and what appears to be some sort of central command console. Perhaps this being controls the growth of the mass, or more appropriately, the grave mound. Is it building something? Is it sentient? Is it intelligent? The entity has been appropriately designated the grave mind. My lords, Dr. Grant proceeded to explore the mass further, but could not ascertain anything else of value. He concludes that we are left with two options. We could order a full dissection of the creature, 
tearing it apart down to a molecular level in the hope that we will discover its secrets. Or we could simply observe it. It may take decades or even centuries to bear fruit, but perhaps eventually we will come to understand what the grave mind is and what it is building. As ever my lords, the choice is yours. Thanks for watching folks, let me know what choice you would make in the comments, and if you want to hear another story, please click the video on screen now.